Hi there. Welcome back to Sticks and Strings. Hello. Hello. I'm Naomi. Beth. Eve. And we are Three Sisters Creative. And this is our episode, I think, number seven. And mm-hmm. we're back uh, with some more crazy stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually go first, so I'm going to go first. Um, the first thing I have in show and tell is this. Um, this is eight ounces. This is my Esther, as I call it, my Esther spin. That I started spinning, I think I told you guys, um, in episode, I think it's 3A, I think it is, um, I was starting to spin this while my mom was in the hospital. And then I talked about it a couple of episodes ago, how I couldn't look at it for a long time, and then I decided to finish it. And I had two packages of this fiber from Quillen Fiber Arts, and... I decided to go ahead and spin it together. So this is four, excuse me, eight ounces. Came out to about 750 yards. It's fingering weight. Um, It's really beautiful. It hasn't had a bath yet, and I expect it's going to bloom up and be a little puffier um, after its bath. So, So, Naomi. Yes. For myself and for others who don't know. Yes. What is the process of after you spin it, what do you have to do? Oh, so you have to ply it. So what's plying? Mean? Um, so when you very first spin the wool, you spin it in one direction. That's what I was doing on that video. I had the the, the fluffy wool in my hand, and I was pulling it out in in bits and adding twists to it, which it winds up clinging to itself, and it has energy. And you spin it, you spin it one direction, and then you take all of that fiber and you put it back through the wool and you spin it against itself the other direction. This is something called chain plying where you take like, uh, it's three, you take, it's like a crochet hook, kind, a crochet loop kind of, you pull a loop through a loop, you pull some thread through a loop and that creates three, three pieces of the yarn and you're, you're plying it in the opposite direction it was originally spun. So it, it clings together into what looks like yarn now. So um, that's what makes it balanced and so it's not a big curvy curly Q mess when you go to knit with it. So you ply it back on itself or, or like you can have two or three strands of the singles and you ply them together. So when you're buying yarn in the store, you it, look for the number of ply that's, that's well, in Well, sometimes it? You, you they have uh, four ply, eight ply, 10 ply, and usually they're very small um, uh, single single plies are very small and then they put them together you see some that are like a two ply yarn like what's on our web on our Etsy shop is a two ply that I made and it's much thicker it's thick and thin but it's uh, so that was done what I did with that one was I plied the whole the whole thing I mean excuse me I spun the whole thing and then I made it into a a, a, a yarn cake with a center pole and, a, and an outside um, you know so I mean I made it into a yarn like a yarn ball with a center pole so I pulled that out and I got the other end and I put them together and then and I plied it together that way so it's a two ply back on itself and um, so you're pulling from the center and the outside of the ball at the same time so that uses up I think I think you can get the most yardage and you don't have to have multiple bobbins going at the same time. So there's many ways to ply yarn, but so then that's what I did with this. I chain plied it or Navajo ply. You can hear that phrase sometimes. So, and you said it hasn't had a bath yet. Yeah. So so what you do is after you spin it like this, you put it in a, a warm bath, not too hot and no agitation. You don't, you don't scrub it around or anything. You just kind of let it soak in there for 15 minutes and or so and that the the warm water uh just kind of gets those fibers to what they call bloom and i had a i had a skein of a, of a yarn similar to this and i took a photo of it before and a photo of it after and it's amazing the difference so i'll put up a photo of this and then i'll put up a photo ne- maybe next week of it with a bath Um, because it has to dry for a long time. This is going to take forever to dry because it's so, so much volume. 
But this is 750 yards, and so I'm going to, I think I found a, a shawl pattern. And I'm gonna make something for myself and keep it and have it be a, a memorial to my mom. And so that when I wear it, it will remind me of her and, and hopefully give me comfort in that way. So this is the Monet colorway from, from Quill and Fiber Arts. It's beautiful, it's purples and greens and blues and, and some goldish colors, mostly green. It looks like his lily ponds, Monet's lily ponds. That looks so. pretty yeah, so it's, it's, that's my accomplishment that I finally finished this week. And I have some haul because I got Valentine money and I got Christmas money. So I went to my favorite yarn store, Tempe Yarn and Fiber, and I bought these. And I'm kicking myself because I really want two more. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, this one, these are, this is Sonoran Desert Dyed Fiber. She doesn't do a lot, and she doesn't have a website, but you can buy it through Tempe Yarn and Fiber. Um, but don't buy it all because I want some more. Anyway, um, this is all, uh, this is natural dyes. So she uses uh, items from her surround. I guess she lives up north in, uh, north of the city, like maybe Carefree area or something like that. So she has, it's like desert landscape and so she takes stuff from her yard and from surrounding areas in the Sonoran Desert and dyes these yarns. This one is this beautiful avocado green color is from a Palo Verde tree. Palo oh. Verdes are green it's literally translated to green stick. Palo is stick and verde is green and that's and we have these in abundance out here. You and can, they're trees that Look like sticks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, no, they're like the one in my yard is really beautiful, but the bark is oh, yeah, the no, bark but, is bright green. What I mean so, is they're not a bunch of shady with leaves and all yeah. that. They have shade, but it's mine provides a lot of shade. It just depends. They but, grow like a bush. But yeah, of. they they can grow like a bush, or you can train them to grow like a big tree. But anyway, so that's what this is dyed with, and then this one is pecan husks. Pecans grow. We have a lot of pecan. Con holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Arkansas, has con holes, con. but but we have a lot of pecan groves here. Uh, they grow well, and so this is pecan husks. Um, it's just so beautiful. And I thought there's a new shawl pattern that came out today or yesterday called by Casa Pinka called Botanique, and it's like a thought of like botany or you know natural thing. And I thought, oh my gosh, this would so be so beautiful. They had a couple of other colors there, and I thought, I should have gotten four. But I don't have time for a shawl, so we'll see. <laughs> so that's my haul today. Oh, and the other thing, when I, because I'm still working on the dress, the magic, the dress, the dress. So I went to the, the store to buy an invisible zipper foot, the Coates and Clark invisible zipper foot that you're supposed to use which my machine, <laughs> I tried to lighten the foot pressure and everything, but my machine just bent it like it's because it's just plastic. Anyway, that was a disaster I'll tell you about later. But while I was there, I found these adorable little patterns. This one is sewing room accessories. It's got like a sewing machine cover, a little trash bin, a pin cushions, um, like pattern weights that you can put on your pattern instead of pins, which I wish I'd had. And um, all different kinds of things, like a tiny little pin cushion with a dress form on it, and real cute. And then um, <clears throat> this one is another sewing room accessory. It looks like an apron with like pockets, so you can be Miss 1950s with your little apron and your pockets with all your stuff in it, which is kind of cute. But I really bought it because it has a, a cat um, that can hold. You were talking about pattern clips. It has those on here. And then it's a pin cushion shaped like a cat. Real cute. I want Eve to make that for me. And then... <laughs> look at that. And these are hot and cold packs. Like a, cold, like a shoulder pad and um, a wrist uh, wrap. And then uh, for your eyes. <laughs> so you could put that... Like you can fill it with... Oh, yeah. it, it, it suggests just like that. It suggests filling it with rice. Um, but I heard somebody, 
I bought one once from a craft fair that was filled with something else. I can't remember. It wasn't barley. But it was some other grain that does better than rice. But anyway, so these are little hot and cold packs. Look at those. Those are cool. And then this one, this one is knitting bags and knitting accessories. It says a craft bag. So it's just a, a big bag that ties at the top. And then this one here has uh, handles of some sort. And then there's a knit, you can barely see it probably. There's a knitting needle packet right here. So I don't know, maybe some of these will wind up on our Etsy shop, but uh, I thought it was really fun. And these were on sale for like $1.99. And she's already opening Did it. Did you so. say that the patterns were from Quick Sew? They're from Quick Sew. They're Quick Sew. Yeah, sorry. These I got these at Joann's. They're Quick Sew. And right now, my Joann's has them on sale for $1.99. Normally, they're supposed to be $19.95, which I think is crazy. But um, anyway, that's my fun project, as though I have time to do that. <laughs> And well, I was gonna say today's show is brought to you from McDonald's. Oh yeah, McDonald's <laughs> all the way now. <laughs> and Dunkin' Donuts. Well, we're, we're, we are recording early today, so yeah. Um, it's uh, so we needed some caffeine. Well, we always do, but <laughs> and what am I working on today? I decided to bring. I really wanted to bring the dress because I need to hand sew in the the lining, but. I thought I couldn't have that. It would like cover her and her and <laughs> that way. And so I decided I better not. Yeah. Well, I, I started bringing my painting stuff out here. Cause then we said, yeah, you should have painted. And I brought out a little canvas for doing a flower. And I had the flower I wanted to do uh, uh, set up. And then I was like, but I need this color and this color and this color and this color and I need these brushes and I need the thing of water and I need something to put it on so that it doesn't get all over the table. And you know what? It's going to stay in my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I thought, well, you know, if you, you know, it'd be great to be more work in the dress, but that you like to bring a lot of stuff. And then, and then if something happens and the, no, I, I know. just saw disaster happen. Well, right <laughs> now... The I, the only thing I would need to bring is a pair of scissors, a needle, and a and a a, th a thread because I I have to hand sew. So okay, um, the story of the dress. I'll tell the story of the dress later. But what I'm working on today is the pair. The I think I told you about this before. I made this sock for my husband's uncle, and I'm trying to get the other one done. And these are my flexi flips. I think you can see they are double pointed knitting needles. That's a row counter. These are the double pointed knitting needles and they flex. So you only need two to make a circle instead of usually when you're using double points, you have to have three or four. So this and they flex like that and they're really easy to use. So you get a set of three and this is just a just a simple I don't know. I don't know who makes this. Oh, Susan Bates. It's just a little counter, row counter. Because what I did was on this sock, you see these weird little. I don't know if you can see these weird little yarn things hanging out here. I was gonna ask you about I, that. I I put this. I put this marker in when I stopped the toe, and I put this marker in when I started the heel. And then I counted the rows, and now I've forgotten what it is, but I can recount. But I think it's like 63, so I, I'm at 17, so I don't have to worry about it. But I think it's like 63 rows. And then I also, when I finished the heel, I put one here. And then when I stopped, I'm sorry, yeah, and when I stopped the leg, I put one here. So that way, if I have those counts, it the, the socks will be the same. That's why I have those weird little things in there. That's why I have a row counter, so I don't have to think. I just count the rows until I get uh, the same, and then I start the heel. So that's nice. I don't have to that's measure only, it anymore. I need a, a counter like that. So, I can... so that's what I'm working <laughs> on. What are you working on? What am I working on? Yeah. Um, I have a couple things that I did. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the embroidery.com left to stitch uh, challenge. And um, so 
I've been working this week on Tribal Owl, um, the <laughs> that I was, you know, gonna give to Rachel on the 29th of October, of January for her birthday. Now, you were gonna give <laughs> it to I'm, her for Christmas. Well, yeah, originally <laughs> I was gonna do, do it for Christmas, and then I decided I'm not gonna have time to get this done, and so I did the I give her a, a different owl pattern. And I was going to do Tribal Owl for her birthday on the 29th because I thought, oh, I'll have plenty of time. And then that didn't happen. And so uh, I'm still working on it. But I made some good progress on it. Um, but then I decided uh, the other day uh, uh, to start. Uh, I had a new start on this pattern that I, uh, that I did for my mother. I don't know, you can't see it, but... It's called Blessed. Oh, I put it Blessed. in a video. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Two or three, I think three weeks ago. Yeah. But anyway, it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And it has my mom's dates on there. And I had decided, because um, I had asked about it, and uh, in, I think in, in my video, the uh, my Fantasy Stitches video, uh, if I should put it on the Etsy shop, if people, you know, wanted to, to buy it so they could put, you know, their own loved ones, you know, days on there. Uh, but, uh, so I think I'm probably going to do that. Um, but I got to start on that. So I have part of the beginning of the border. I, you can't see the, the this side over here because it's under the hoop. But, uh, so I'm working on the border and, and uh, the word blessed because that's in the same color. Um, but... Uh, so I'm working on that, and it, it's DMC number 32, blue, Blueberry, <laughs> and this is, uh, this is one of the fabrics that I dyed the other day, uh, last Saturday, or last Friday, or whatever it was, um, in pearl gray. It's just a Monaco Lugana 28 count, but um, so yeah, I got to start on that, and then uh, I also started this... Uh, Peacock. It's a, a little design works kit. That's pretty. Yeah. And it came with a white Ada that I dyed this purpley color. I would call that pink. I was yeah, going to say it's, it it's pink kind of to a me. pink color. It's kind she of a... would never say pink. She doesn't, she doesn't <laughs> utter the word pink. Um, I was like, to me, when it's... you picked it up, I was like, that's pink. Well, what color did you that's use? That's purple. But that's a my, that's, just, my purple came out purple. It's I just did, did it very very light, uh, you know, very light purpley, and it's I just pink. I didn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it, it is kind of pink. It's got uh, it's, it's a kind nice of like pink. like like I always think of it as um, this color, as um, burgundy cherry ice cream. This is which this color. turns out pink. By the way, yeah, yeah. Well, did you, know, you use the wine or did you use the purple? Purple. I use purple. Well, I, when I use, oh, well, I put gray with my purple. Mm -hmm. My purple came out purple. Purple. <laughs> if you look at that next to this, that's pink. Yeah, <laughs> it's very. Well, light she can purple. call it purple if it makes her feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I so I got a little, a little bit of a start on this. So it's you can't yeah, really right. see it. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to see. But that's a neat pattern. But the pattern is. Cool. I yeah. love that. That's yeah, so that's beautiful. a great pattern. Are you gonna that's give great. this to me? I could. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So yeah, because I wanted I wanted to you know to go with this. There's a light purple in this pat in this thing, but it's surrounded by all these other colors. Because I thought, well, you know, any one of these colors would be good, but they're all, you know, up to the edge of the, of the design, and I didn't want, you know, to have any issues with, um, you know, blue threads on blue fabric or whatever like that. And so, uh, you know, there is a there is there is purple and light purple and whatever uh, colors in the in the pattern. But I thought they're they're all surrounded by greens and blues and stuff, uh, where where the light purple is, so it won't disappear into yeah. the fabric. So I really like that. Yeah. But I'm probably gonna have to make you know the pattern is you know 
it's all one page, but I'm probably going to have to make uh, like a working copy so that I can mark because it's very, uh, it's just, as you can imagine, it's very pixelated and, you know, blended like, <laughs> like the wolf that I still haven't finished. Um, you know, where there's, it's, there's like, you know, three, three squares of, you know, here and three squares over here and five squares over here, and, you know, of all these different colors because, you know, and so, uh, just in the, you know, where I, I've started, uh, in the center, I, you know, it's like, like I'm going, wait, wait, where's, where, where's that symbol? Where is that symbol? So it's, uh. It's hard to, to find, you know, because, and it's, and it's very tiny. Do you this. make mistakes when you're sleepy? Like, yes. Yeah. I fall asleep with my stitching in my hand and, and I'm like, you know. Have you ever done a stitch in your sleep? Mm, no, but I've dreamed about <laughs> stitching in my sleep where, <laughs> where like I'm, I'll find, uh, I, in my, in, when I was, what was I working on? I think on that Santa nose thing. Um, that like I would fall asleep and I would dream that I was like that I had made some horrible mistake and I had to go back you know several <laughs> rows or something and I wake up and I'm like okay I didn't make the mistake <laughs> you know? I fall asleep knitting all the time <laughs> last night I, I tried to work on this because I was I was to here with the dress and so <laughs> I was like I can't I can't work on it right it's too I'm too tired and I worked on this and did all this and and it's, you get to a stopping point and you're like, I can't, it's too late. And yeah. <clears throat> so I sat down, I'm like, I'm going to sit down and knit. And I was sitting there and I find like I've had, I've, I've put my needle into the stitch in my sleep and I wake up like that. Or I wake <laughs> up and the stitch that I thought was on the needle is off and I'm starting <laughs> to run down. I'm like, no. Like I got through uh, maybe one row I did normal and then the second row I worked on I kept dropping stitches. I kept falling asleep. If I'm like, okay, that's a sign. I need it's to time stop. to go to bed. <laughs> go to bed. Okay. So, am I the only person that, when I get sleepy, I stop doing stuff like that, and I do things that don't doesn't matter, like <laughs> play video games or something. Not video games, but a game on my phone or something. Maybe. <laughs> but of course, maybe that has more to do with the fact that I have so much trouble tracking things with my eyes to see what I'm doing. Uh, speaking of tracking things, that program that you use to keep track of your pattern? Me? Yes. Oh, you're looking at me? Yes. I thought you were looking at Beth. No. Um, knit Companion. Um, how do you get your pattern into that? So <clears throat> um, if you buy an electronic one and a PDF, you it just sucks it right in. But if you have it on paper, you can scan it and create a PDF, and then you can suck it in. Oh, cool. Um, it does it have to be like on a tablet, or can you put it on a phone? I have two tablets. I could put it on a tablet. I'm I would sorry. put it on a tablet just because it's easier to see. Like, oh. I, I, I think you can put it on your phone. I, they, have an, they have an Android version. It doesn't have quite as many features as the, like the paid version of the, the, uh, the Mac. Uh, the iPad one, but uh, but the free version is probably all you would need for cross stitch. Um, what I need is something that keeps track of how yes. far down the pattern I am, not the particular stitches. If I had something like that, I would need to know which the particular stitches are. But um, one of the issues that I run into is that I think I'm on this row and I'm actually on that row. Yeah. Because even when I try to count down. I'm like, what did I count? And I try to count it again. I'm like, is that right? Is that right? Yeah. And it takes me a while before I can figure out what row I'm on. Yeah. So the free version of Knit Companion, I mean, the basic, it has a line that goes this way that you can move this way, a blue, a thin blue. And you, actually, you can adjust the, the size of them, but it has a line that goes, uh, it's a, vertical line and you can move it horizontally and then it has a horizontal line and you can move it vertically so this one is more like a solid dark line but i think you can change it to transparent if you want but then this one is is set up initially like a highlighter so it's got so you can see through it 
So you use that, whether it's a written or a chart, you can, you, and you just move it with your finger down the row. So if you want to... But like, you can still see the symbols through it. If you want to do, uh, like, say, all the black, and then you want to go back and do all the gray, you can go back up your pattern? Oh, yeah. Okay. You just move it around like this. It just moves around wherever you want it. And if you have, like, if and it has row or has counters on the side, so if you know that, like, you have four rows of black, I mean, it, it wouldn't matter because you're using the highlighter bar, but you can keep track of things like that too. But, um, but yeah, you can move it. You can move it all around. You could, I think I would make less mistakes. I had to put the candy hearts in timeout. <laughs> Because it's such a simple pattern. And it it's is. Giving it you is. Such a but, hard time. Uh, the, f I told you I have trouble tracking what I'm seeing. Yeah. Right. And I thought I counted. Now, keep in mind that the candy hearts that I was working on, the thread is almost exactly the same color as the, as the paper, as the, the as fabric. the fabric. And <laughs> I thought I had counted seven stitches and this was like on the first row <laughs> okay this is the second heart i already know and i can look at this one i thought i had counted six seven but it was eight. Oh no so, so then you were all off i was mess. off one stitch all the way down and i had to go back and undo it ribbit, and then ribbit, put it ribbit. back in yes I had, did not have just one frog. I had a whole family of frogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, the worst. So I just said, I, I got it back where it's right, but I had to just not work on it. Not for a while. work on it for a while. I still plan to finish it, but not for a little bit. Um, so then I was working on Peep, which is fabulous. But of course, I was working with the white on. Um, uh, it's a pale white. It's not quite white. On colored fabric that it was really hard to see. <laughs> you need a high but contrast that one, pattern. But that, oh, one, that's <laughs> that one, it well, if it was with the fabric, it would be fine. I should have just chosen black. Of course, with black, I can't see the holes. <laughs> so... Um, I can't win I got all one. the cup. I got the whole cup done on that, and I have one little chick at the bottom done and I need to ask you something about that pattern because it doesn't make sense to me okay but um it, my sister who I taught how to cross stitch knows more about cross stitch than I do <laughs> <laughs> which is cool because you know that's her thing and uh it's my only thing. but I worked on that until midnight last night and I don't you know I have the chicken on top and half a chick here and you know I don't have that much left to do but um, I got tired. So today I'm working on uh, this imaginatively titled Black Whale. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't show you the pattern except that it doesn't come with a picture. It's, 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 a, a, it's a free pattern. It's, it's a free pattern from DMC. Yeah. And a lot of their patterns, they have tons and tons of free patterns on DMC's website. And... A lot of them are really, really intricate. And it does list them by easy, immediate, you know, hard, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't pay attention to that. I just pay attention to whether or not I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I decided I haven't picked this up since October. So I decided to be working on it. Uh, and all week i was trying to because uh, i bought a lot of beads and things like that and i was trying to uh work on scissor pops and i didn't like how any of them were coming out and then <laughs> try to work on what Eve? scissor, scissor fobs. fobs oh and then scissor fobs while i was trying to work on it in a different space than this if i'd been on this table maybe it wouldn't have been as bad but um <laughs> i if you don't know what what uh, crimp beads are they're about the size of a seed bead maybe a little smaller and I picked up the bag uh, that I had there in a little plastic bag I picked them up upside down and they <laughs> went pinging all over the kitchen oh god <laughs> and the dog wanted to help me pick them up <laughs> finally my son he's like what are you doing I said I'm trying to pick up all these little beads and they're everywhere 
So my son helped me pick. I know I didn't get them all. I know I didn't. And they, they were in the grooves of the tiles. They were oh, under the God. furniture. Oh they were, you know. I thought of you this morning, although it wasn't as bad. I had a little tiny, tiny box of uh, hooks and eyes that I was sewing on the dress. And <laughs> I I opened it real carefully and I was looking and I kind of was like, well, I'll get one of these out and bloop, and it fell. <laughs> and they fell on the floor and all over the place. But it wasn't nearly as That's bad. That's a as... carpeted floor, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they don't go bing, bing, bing. No, but they're like, is it, is that, Buried is in the it carpet. there? <laughs> yeah. So I, I finally carpet. finished three. Uh, I was trying the others too. I'll, I'll tell Naomi to take a picture and show you later, but they they have army. Um, that's why they're kind of an olive drab. Um, they have army charms on them. Not navy, not military, army. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one has a little medallion with a tank and, of all things, a grenade. <laughs> that's what came in the package. <laughs> But uh, this is what attracted me to the package. It's a soldier. He's holding a gun because he's a soldier. And a tank. That's cool. Yeah, except this is a tank, right? It has two little jewels right here. And right here. <laughs> it's a pretty tank. It's a pretty tank. <laughs> it's not pink. <laughs> it's a pretty, it should be. It's a pretty but, tank. But... Um, my dad was in the army, and my son was briefly in the navy, and we have re lots, of lots of relatives, of relatives that have been in different armed Your, forces. Our uncle Saul was a tank driver, mm -hmm. oh. and um, one of my son's favorite movies is um, Fury, which is about guys in a tank, which is awesome if you haven't seen the movie, but it is incredibly sad. Um, so, <laughs> as most war movies are or should be, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I liked it. And I know that, you know, they're not very girly, so girls wouldn't probably be attracted to them as much as I am. But army moms might. And I was thinking... And women army are spouses. in the military. Huh? Women are in the military. I know. And they true. use scissors. I know. <laughs> um, so, but on these, um, I'm going to give an option of having either uh, a latch hook... To put on scissors, or a lobster, a keychain, a, a keychain uh, option, thing. yeah, or even a lanyard hook, and I'll put those options, you know, on the on the Etsy site because what kind of hook you want up here is what you want to do with it. So yeah, that's neat. Yeah, yeah. that's very cool. And I, I was thinking about going back. See, I can with these because I attached it. I can easier. I can on all of them, but. Um, I attached it with a, a split a, ring, a tiny split ring, so I can get this off and put something else on without having to undo or redo anything. So, um, the future ones I plan to all make like that, where I can so you can have options, so yeah. you can have options of how you want to use it. Um, and and um, so is this one of those twenty millimeter lobster claws? It's a little small. I, I want to go and small. get some bigger ones, but um, that's what we found. And I thought that they were big enough. But when I try to put this scissors, you can get it in there, but man, it's tough. So you did it all right. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 a little tight. It Nobody works. Can see behind the it microphone. It works. You're behind yeah. the microphone. That's cute. It works, but it's it's. I don't have tight. a scissor fob. You nobody's ever made me a scissor fob. I have several scissors and no fobs. You have you have fingers. You have <laughs> skills. <laughs> you can, and you have a mouth that you didn't you even can ask. Choose, yeah, you can choose a, a charm and. I want a scissor fob. <laughs> I like scissor fob. And now I can't get it off. <laughs> so you get the scissors free. Well, so. <laughs> So Beth just bought kidding, a um, Beth bought a, a plier for opening split rings, which is behind you, Beth. It's in the box underneath. No. Oh, that's anyway, okay. I discovered it has a little hooked top, and it has a kind of a pointy, a little hooked 
side Point. and little pointy side. And if I stick the little hooked side in here and put the little pointy one out there, it opens this so easy. <laughs> and the lobster claw? Yeah, because you know sometimes they're hard to open when they're when they're new. Well, and yeah, and and because you know these are plated, they're plated, they're plate, you know, and the way you plate something is you stick the whole thing in, yeah. and it and it goes all over and. It and sticks. And so they're like basically like painting a window shut, you know. Mm. Um, when I was in school, I took a shop class, a plastics shop class, and um, I learned probably more than I want to learn about. Plus, when I was in Florida, I worked as a jeweler, so I, you know, <laughs> these things. But I know that you have to try to open them, you know, to see if they work. To see if you you know if they need to be worked open or whatever, and you need to be careful that when they do come open, that the plating is still intact. And I know that plating has a bad rap, but you definitely don't want solid gold on <laughs> no. on something like that because not not just the expense. Um, gold actually, the reason you have eighteen carat and fourteen carat is because if you didn't. That just means how much yeah. how much other stuff is in it. Uh, if you didn't, it would just squish. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's Which is why soft. you can use it to do uh, teeth. Huh? Teeth? No. Uh, you know when you overlay it on something. What's yeah. that called? Foil. Yeah. yeah. When you when you rub yeah. it onto something and it stays. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it's really 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 <laughs> malleable. Well, that's why. Why. Uh, in the olden days, when you used to make a coin out of gold, people got to see if it was real. <laughs> yeah, because if it was real, it would squish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they'd ruin your coin by squishing it with your, t- <laughs> your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I love history. Love, 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 love history. Um, as a matter of fact, um, when I decided I didn't want to major in in art for a variety of reasons, not because I didn't love art, but... There was a lot of reasons. Anyway, um, I decided to major in history, and loved everything that I learned. Um, but then decided that the only real, I, I decided to major in history because I thought maybe I would like to teach history. I had a fabulous history teacher in high school. He was so good, and. I just thought, oh, I'd like to do that. And then I, you know, worked with teenagers at McDonald's and said, I don't want to be around those people. (laughs) (laughs) It takes a special soul. Yeah. I love kids until they get to be in their teen years. And then when they're done being teenagers, they're good again. (laughs) People who can work with teenagers are are definitely, definitely gifted. Um, But... um, I I love hearing how things um, came to be, what what caused, you know. That's why you like that podcast I found for you. Yes. 99% Invisible. Yes. Highly it's a very, recommended. Very good podcast. I don't listen to it when I'm at home, but if I'm in the car and I don't have a audio book or anything, I turn it on. It's very good. And... I don't care what episode comes up because... Yeah, it's all interesting. It's all so different and mm-hmm. varied. And I worked as a graphic designer for so long that I, you know, I understand a lot of where that's see. coming through. Yeah, they, they talk about, for those of you who don't know, 99% Invisible talks about the invisible uh, ways, initially invisible, I guess, if you don't know to look, ways that design has affected our lives in just so many different aspects. Um, it's just really fascinating. Like there was one episode about the kidney shaped pool and why that's popular now and how it sort of came to be, uh, popular. And then, um, there's one about, um, about like bus stop benches and like, what do they call it? Oh, there's a term for it. Not inconvenient art, but like, like design that is purposefully made, uh, created to make someone uncomfortable, so mm-hmm. that like the 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 bus stop benches they put arms like 
if it's meant for three people, they put little yeah, rails so you don't, for your arms. So, people so you can't don't sleep, sleep on it. Yeah. Right. Or, or different things like that. Um, I remember learning at uh, the Boston, in Boston, the Boston Symphony's um, building, uh, when you walk into the, to the hall, um, in the entry, there is a domed ceiling right above you. It's very beautiful. But I heard from, I don't know who it was there that told me that the reason it was designed that way was to amplify your voice. Mm -hmm. So you don't stand so there. So you don't stand there and talk. Because, yeah. because all of a sudden that's, you hear your voice coming back at you. That's how um, uh, 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 the uh, Dorothy What's Her Face Pavilion in Los Angeles, uh, where they hold, the, they used to hold, I don't know if they still do, but they used to hold the Oscars there. Oh, yeah. And they had that over the ceiling, over the, by the entryway, so that people wouldn't stand there and congregate in front of Because you hear your voice and you're like, oh, let's go somewhere else yeah. to talk. Yeah. And so, yeah. So that's a that's one of those design elements. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that they've done a podcast on that, but it's that same, same thing. But um, well, one of the things I like uh, to notice is public art. Um, there are some parts of Phoenix that are uglier than sin. <laughs> but, Every but, city. But uh, Scottsdale has tons of public art that is really innovative. Um, well, what I would say is innovative. I don't know. Um, but there's a... Um, I, don't get, I, I, I don't know that you'd call it a reservoir. It's intended for water. Um, but if any of you have seen the, uh, and there's no water in it, um, but if any of you had seen uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, the the Fellowship of the Ring, when, what is the girl else's name? She's running Frodo away from uh, danger, and she goes across the river, and she says something, and the little water horses come running down, right? And they, yeah. Okay. And they drown so, the guys. Yeah. Well, the way those horses look in the water, they're, they come out of, in Scottsdale, they have horses that come out from the side of the reservoir. And oh, to no. me, it, it is very reminiscent of that because uh -huh, it's just cool. their chests, yeah. you know, and their heads coming out. And, and I drive by that and I'm like, I love that. I love yeah. it. There's and, this, oh, sorry. And there's a, um, a bridge. But it's not a huge bridge. It's like a little bridge over, walking bridge over a creek or something. And it's got all this like steampunk kind of stuff on it. It's very interesting. And it's all over in Scottsdale. You see it everywhere. Um, in Tucson, on on uh, Grant Road, there's uh, a sculpture. I don't, even, I don't even know what... It's such an ugly <laughs> area. But... All of a sudden, there's a sculpture in front of this building, and it's of like people, a whole bunch of people, and they're all holding, they're like leaning forward, and they're all holding hands behind them. And from a certain angle, you can see all the people, but then as you get closer to it, they're made up of like thin, like st strips of metal, I guess. And so at certain angles, they completely disappear. Or you just see the lines, and then as you keep going, then you can see the people. It's very cool in that way. Really, really, really neat. How about the Tempe, uh, the statues in Tempe that are in downtown Tempe that are on that one? Oh, gosh, which road is it? Uh, and I mean, there's you one mean, that's a bench with a statue sitting like that on the bench, and you can go sit by it. You him. mean Mesa? No, it's in Tempe. I've never anyway, seen it's in, in the Greater Phoenix area. <laughs> I've never seen them in, in Tempe, but I've seen them along Main Street in Mesa, downtown Mesa. There's all different kinds is of it Mesa? people. Like I it. It's it was Mesa. Tempe. No, Mill, Mill Avenue is the only road in downtown in downtown Tempe. It doesn't have any sculptures. <laughs> no, no, that's true. <laughs> so it's it's main. You're thinking of Main Street in in downtown Mesa. Very yeah, beautiful. and and it's got uh, people. We were a giant there. shoe. <laughs> we were there. Yeah, that's that's Mesa. Mm -hmm. We were there um, over Christmas time. I went down there, and somebody had put stocking, like knitted stocking hats, on all those statues. <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. I was like, I wish I thought of that. Uh, when uh, when you were talking about the the uh, 
the podcast about how, you know how things are made or whatever, the history of things. Um, there's a show called The History of Food that talks about like um, things like like how Pizza Hut and and Domino's started. Yeah. Um, and uh, interesting that like talking about I think it was one of one of the other of them started like in the Midwest where nobody knew anything about pizza and the, and the guys who made who started it didn't know anything about didn't pizza. yeah oh. they were like <laughs> they were not Italian you know it wasn't a and we was, can tell yeah to this day <laughs> but they but they made you know I don't know where they got the who they knew or how they knew about pizza. But they were like, you know, in in Michigan or someplace, you know, in the in the middle of, you know, the Midwest or whatever. Not it wasn't an Italian tradition. It was just, you know, and, but they they and and people are people their customers were like, what the heck is this, you know? And uh, but it was really interesting. And, and the you know pizza and and Domino's, Domino's I think was two brothers that like one of the brothers left. And um, and uh, and then Pizza Hut was two two brothers who started you know who did the pizza, <laughs> but anyway that you know that they uh, it, it but it talks about like um, Milton Hershey and and he, one of the one person that used to work for him uh, was a farmer named whose last name was Reese, and they <laughs> let him go and he he was the guy who ended up. Making Reese's. Reese's pieces, yeah, <laughs> Reese's cups, and, Reese's cups, yeah, and um, and and the guy who made M and M's was uh, also a Hershey's employee, I think, and they, I think they, and they let him go, and uh, and he ended up uh, partnering with. Uh, a guy who worked there, and both of them, their last name started with M, <laughs> and they and 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 they invented the M and M's, and it, it's just it's a really great show. I love it, those stories, like like yeah. you hear like the the thing about post it notes, how it really was a glue failure, and they're like, <laughs> hey, let's turn this around into yeah <laughs> into you know repositionable things or whatever. Three M. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and and um, I think public art is so important, especially in in cities, because cities aren't pretty. Mm. Uh, you know, you have the 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 traffic and the noise and the uh, buildings that you know the homes it's, and all that and utilitarian. You know, yeah, and then you come across what it could just be a sound wall, but there's a wall, a sound wall like that in in. On Broadway, I think, near the school, um, where they put like green and yellow bricks in it. They're not bricks into the wall, but coming out of the wall that make it look like like plants <laughs> across the you know um, the thing. <clears throat> and and you know it's not huge and it's not you know some you know masterpiece, but it's there's pretty. A, there's a building in downtown Phoenix. There's an alley near the symphony hall there's an alleyway and um i used to sometimes walk that way from because i used to work at the symphony office which is one street north or no i don't know what it is west of the symphony hall that's you <laughs> <laughs> one of you that was not me <laughs> um anyway uh so to easily get to the hall sometimes we'd so walk nice. through the val to the alley and there's a parking garage right there. And so there's some, some buildings here and then this parking garage and the alley through. And that wall is painted with the funniest graffiti or, you know, graffiti painting, whatever. And a um, bunch of like puns and funny pictures. And um, it's really cool. It's something to well, see. And even cross stitch when you think about it, you know, uh, back, way back when, you know, sewing was something you did to stick two pieces of cloth together. And uh, embroidery and cross stitch and all came about because people wanted their clothes to have more. Mm -hmm. 
and, and you know not just <laughs> not just better fabrics but did you listen to that one of um, 99% invisible about color oh my I gosh it was so interesting about remember. about the development of color um, in general but also in clothing and um, and it mm -hmm. reminded me of, very much about what we do yeah um, cross stitch has no practical purpose we're not sewing two pieces of cloth together to wear it or something. right yeah I, but it has an aesthetic purpose um, you know that's why there's towels with an area where you can cross stitch and other you know aprons and towels and pillowcases that are intended for putting embroidery on them and because people need beauty yeah in their lives and they need and well and we have the luxury at this uh, you know yeah that that we can we can uh, decorate things and not have to yeah just well wear. like you know it, you, it it used to be that with like samplers or whatever that that girls learn to to embroider initials because you would send your clothes out to be laundered you know not everybody would do their own laundry uh. and so they would send uh like if they sent you know shirts or handkerchiefs or whatever uh. out to be washed they would put in their initials in it so that they would get their own things back so you know you'd put like you know your say your husband's initials or ec or whatever you put that on the in the corner or on the collar or in the whatever and so you know, you give them to somebody to do, to do your laundry and they would give them back to you and they would have your own initials on there or whatever. That's so, neat. So you learn how to... I didn't realize you that. Know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, why, that's why old samplers always have alphabets yeah. and numbers and stuff like that. That's funny. And so then, then people started, you know, also learning other, you know, other stitches. I, I learned something whatever. fascinating from a, a knitting uh, blog that I watch. Um, I guess... You know the I don't know if you're familiar with Latvian uh, mittens. They're those mittens that well in all sort of you see it in Norway and all those Scandinavian countries. They're they're mittens and they have a they have a a point. They come to a point here, mm. um, and so and then they have a so the flat front has a design and then the palm has a design and it's what we think of as well. It's not exactly fair isle, but it's stranded color work. So it's you know one one black and then three white and, and it creates these designs right um and uh i guess there's history behind all those patterns and and huge there's tons of books about latvian mitten patterns but what she was saying was that a young girl would learn to make these mittens and start compiling them because um something to do with i think when she got engaged she had to give a mitten give a set of mittens to her her fiance and then i think to his parents and then when they got married everybody at the wedding party got a pair of mittens and they weren't all the same it wasn't mm. like she made 50 50 they yeah. all had different patterns so when they were very young they started making mittens for mm. when they got married and then I guess, and you also had to give one to the to the preacher who a set to the preacher who married you, and <laughs> you know, and then um, you have a dowry. So, and, of yeah, all the guests, <laughs> all the guests at your wedding got a set of mittens that you made, and um, and then she heard that apparently when you were older, you uh, started or you continued to knit a stash of them and then when you die everyone who comes to your funeral gets mittens made by you and, and the preacher so i'm like these preachers have 300 mittens, Brazilian mittens. <laughs> but i thought goodness and oh. they're beautiful and oh, it's like, really oh, cold there I mean? well yeah it's really cool and i thought yeah you know and but i guess and I, what i guess is like they they're not pe people who get those for, for, at a wedding the reason they're so preserved is because they don't they didn't use them you know mm -hmm. they would put them away like oh this is from you know so and so's, and -so's wedding yeah. um and um so 
I thought that was kind of neat. So that's why there's so many that they still have around because mm. they were considered a special gift and they weren't used. Not like they, they, they do find some that have been used. I guess they found uh, some, I saw a picture of some old mittens that had a thumb and a finger and then this was like a mitten. These three fingers were together. Mm -hmm. So that I guess it's like a like you could still shoot a gun or something with them. Mm. And they made them for the soldiers. Mm. And um, they found a pair of them. I saw an old photo of some originals like that because the wool, you know, can last so long. But um, but yeah, so it, it, it's it's fascinating. But the reason I read that that stranded color work was was used so often in those countries is because you wind up with a fabric that's double thick because you're using double amount of wool even if you're carrying so you knit three blue and then you knit one red you've carried that red behind the blue so it it still creates a, a thicker fabric and so it makes it warmer and that's why they initially started doing that like the, some of the traditional, uh, it's called twined knitting, where you just you just alternate black red or black white, black white, black white, black white, and then white black white black white. So it's like a almost like a checkerboard of the knit stitches, and the, and you twist the yarn every time you change, and it creates this thick warm fabric. So it's really a practical thing that then people took and made into you know designs and all these different things that they do you know to to make it more interesting and you know and and beautiful and to beautify the you have to have the wool you have to be wearing it because it's you know so cold but then you make something beautiful out of it it's kind of cool well i i just um i like the way that people have learned how to put art surround themselves with art now you don't always like the public art that's made <laughs> On, uh, well, some people might like it. I don't know why. Um, at UNM, they made a fountain. University of New Mexico. Yes, they made a fountain. It's three, what do you call those? I guess you would call it a, a giant piece of rock. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, they're, they're, they're just three of them, different, three different sizes, uh, but they're tall. And, and not very big. They're, you know. And on the ground, in between some of them. Are you talking about the Stonehenge fountain? Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a, a thing that water can come up out of. But, it, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the rocks. It just comes out somewhere in the middle. It's kind of the silliest thing I've ever seen. And well, some uh, there's the car. got a very the, large grant to make that. So. <laughs> and then there's the car on the stick. Over on Gibson. <laughs> At uh, UNM, it, it, I always like the toothpick. The toothpick. Uh, uh, it's the toothpicks. It, it, over by the duck pond, there were there were like these tall things, and then they had like little arms that that I guess moved in the yeah. wind. windmilled around, At least that's, and, and they uh, called yeah, them I, the toothpicks. I, I didn't mind that those. Is you. That is me. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Turn your phone off. Beth is loud. It's like. <laughs> It's like I was telling, I was telling them that there. I saw an episode of The Big Bang Theory, and it was one that I hadn't watched. You know, I used to be a big fanatic with that show, used and to then be. yeah, yeah she's and then I like know, I said, used to be no, she no, isn't no. Anymore. I used to, I used to <laughs> watch the show like crazy. I I even went to to see a taping, you know, and I used to just watch that show all the time. And then after my brain surgery. They removed that part of her brain. <laughs> it was cured, <laughs> and uh, I still like the show a lot, but uh, but uh, I don't uh, watch it like that anymore. But anyway, I was watching one uh, an episode of it I think last night, night before last, whatever it was, and um, and uh, Sheldon Cooper said something about I'd rather be stuck in a waiting in line without my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've come to. Yes, yes. but Not very uh, far. Okay. I used to actually. I used to. I used to write fan fiction, and if you go to fanfic.net, there's still several stories there that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And then I also had a website because I used to write um, 
X Files stories, mm-hmm. and so there are several. There, I had a and friend. That's why she has her nerd badge. I have, yes, I had <laughs> She's a friend. Not wearing it today. I, yeah, I had a friend uh, who was also uh, an X Files enthusiast, and she built the website for me. And and the other day, I was doing stuff on my computer, and I was, you know, I have a list of favorites, whatever, at old old sites that I had saved, and. Um, and in there was that and I, that website. I thought, oh yeah, and I clicked on it, and there's all my old stories, and all <laughs> my old Xbox stories. So if you ever want to look me up to Google me, I used to, I used, like I said, I used to write. I have several X Files stories and several Big Bang Theory stories, <laughs> and I even, I never, I never posted it anywhere, but I wrote a. Uh, a quantum leap. I was working on a quantum leap story. Quantum leap story. Actually, I had it on my on my. I had a computer that was stolen, and it was on that computer. They and probably published it and got <laughs> money for it. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I had. Uh, fortunately, I had. I had like printed printed off the stuff I had written, or or most of it. So I had a printout of the of the story that I'd written. Um, because I had not backed up anything like an idiot. I hadn't backed up anything, saved anything up from my my computer, and um, then it was stolen. But uh, so yeah, so I had I had a quantum loop story, and um, I think I had worked on a Star Trek Next Generation. So you can see all my all my obsessions that I used oh, to have. Your nerd base is over there. Yeah. Well, speaking of nerd base. <laughs> Speaking of nerds, did you see that that they're showing uh, the Lord of the Rings at IMAX this weekend? No, oh. this week. I saw something about that. Thursday. Oh, you wow. can go see. It's not the extended version. So you can pay money to to, to fall go see asleep. something you have free. I don't fall asleep during Lord of the Rings. I I don't either, but sometimes I do. It well, depends on how tired I am. But I love those movies with all my heart. But is it? Here's the question. Is it the theatrical release? Yes. Or the extended yeah. version? I just said the it theatrical. wasn't the extended oh, version. Oh, well, then I ain't going. Robert, Robert was <laughs> like, aw. <laughs> I saw something about so that because... I, I get... infected my son with my love of science fiction. Speaking of love of science That's fiction. That's fantasy, technically. Um, the uh, I watched the first um, floss tube of somebody from oh. the UK. It just popped up on my feed and I said, no, nah, I watched it. And I, I loved all the work she was working on. I was like, oh my gosh, I, there's a huge dragon. I mean, she's really good. Anyway, uh, apparently she's been doing Instagram for a while and decided to do floss too because her fiance wasn't excited about the cloth she just bought. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she was showing this huge dragon and she said, see, this needle minder is, is also from the same company. It's a Rivendell needle minder. And I said, Rivendell. <laughs> so after I finished watching it, I went and you know, looked up, you know, what she said, where she said it was from in the UK, and bought that one and one that says, uh, "You shall not pass." <laughs> Love it. I can't wait for them to get in, and oh, I was like, fun. "I should never have put on and clicked on that." Speaking picture. of nerd badges, what? When we used to, when we were in college, we used to play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah, yeah. not just college. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's where we started. No, I started and, in high school. Yeah, and anyway, um, but um, our friend Jan had uh, her own, you know, had her had a dungeon or whatever that we that we always, uh, almost always played in. Uh, when we when there was a bunch of us, that used to get together. We used to get together. Oh, oh, I don't know. Every couple of weeks, once a week, whatever, because we were uh, most of us were in marching band, and um, and so like Jan and our friend Gary and our friend, uh, why can't I say his name? Mm-hmm. What is his name? Who? Scott Snowden? No, he didn't go to those. No, um, he's he was in band. Um, <gasps> I don't know who you're thinking of. Angelo? No. Angelo, yeah, Angelo. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Jan, Gary, Angelo, Eve, me, and our and eventually our me. RK and Naomi played with us sometimes. She was a lot younger than me. And uh, anyway, we used to play in uh, in this uh, dungeon or whatever that Jan had had you know had had planned out. Anyway, at one point. 
we faced a Balrog. She had a Balrog <laughs> in one of the rooms that we were in. So yeah, but I, we were I don't know seventh or eighth level in her in her dungeon. But yeah, so yeah, we used to. And that's, that's what it's so funny because like that's like, when Doritos first came out. Yeah, yeah, we nacho, used to get nacho sick. cheese Doritos. Yeah, I don't like nacho sick. cheese Doritos. <laughs> but um, I liked their original flavor. But after that, I was like, but we yeah. had. Uh, but you know, like 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 I said, I used to be a big uh, Big Bang Theory fanatic, and so on that show, of course, they play Dungeons and Dragons. They do all the nerd things, and they play Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm like, that's not how we used to play it, you know, <laughs> because I, uh, you know, just like having like I guess I don't know if they have a board game or whatever version yeah, of it. They, or yeah, something they like do that. board games. Yeah, yeah, Mark, and Mark and we that. we played it, you know, the old the old old school way with a piece of graph paper and a pencil and you draw you know you draw your own thing and you know it was just yeah, you know, the the whole just I, we were really into that I still have my dice and yeah. and everything from several several sets of dice well because, you know you my know, daughter in college she and her friends started playing last year oh yeah um <clears throat> and over the summer they would play virtually also <laughs> so she had a lot of fun with that I think they've kind of they've kind of cooled that um, but, uh, but yeah, so they, she was very interested in it this, this year, this yeah. past year, especially through the pandemic, I guess they would get together online and play. So that was fun. I used to, so when she's I, working on her nerd badge too. <laughs> when I was, uh, she's a musician, so she kind of automatically gets a nerd yeah. badge. <laughs> when I was in, uh, when I was living in Little Rock, there was a, a, a comic book store and there were like two branches of it. There was one in Little Rock. In West Little Rock and one in North Little Rock, uh, branches of you know of the same uh, shop, and so I would go uh, because I was an X Files nut. I would you know they, had, they I would go sometimes they because they had some X Files comic books or whatever trading cards and stuff. I was a real nerd. Have you you've seen the movie The Big Sick, right? The truth is out there. <laughs> You have to go see that movie, but the big um, sick. But I used to go and and like at, at one of the, at the North Little Rock store, I guess they had uh, they had D and D dice or something, and I would go and sort of look longingly at them because you know I was I lived in in by my you know with no nobody, nerds. nobody else no yeah. nearby nerds nearby well, and, nerds and even so thing. you know like nobody I knew That's played the I mean. game a- anymore or whatever so but yeah so. Well, see, now you and Jan and Eve, we can get online and play together online. <laughs> you should. I don't know if I even... Well, I still have my... I, th- I think I still have my my character that, that I, I used to I play did. with. I thought I did. I'm not sure that. if I still do or not. I don't know if Jan still has why her stuff. Why would you keep that? For fun. Because why <laughs> would I not <laughs> keep it? Why, well, what she, would keeps, I, she keeps what everything, would I do with so it? that's, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Okay, I have to tell my story now. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dress story. So the dress, <laughs> which I put a picture last week, that was before I put on the wet waistband. And so I've redone everything in that dress, I think, at least one time. <laughs> Except putting the skirt on. But so it called for a certain ribbon on the waistband, and I put it on. It looked horrible. I took it off. I did another trim. I didn't... It, It worked, but I didn't like it, and I took that off, and I put another trim on. So the the third trim was the charm of that. And then when, let's see, when I was making the lining, the lining has boning that in it, and the boning is naturally sort of bent in a circle because you buy it, you know. And it's just a piece of plastic with a, a, like a polyester sleeve on it. So you cut it to whatever yardage it said. And the lining had markings that I copied diligently in length. And I was frustrated and distracted and I was reading and it said, cut the boning to the length of the markings and then proceed. So I measured one of the markings and I cut it and then I cut four because there was two on this side of the back, two on this side of the back. So I'm sewing them. I sew two on, and one of them wasn't exactly the same length as the marking, but I was like, well. 
And then I go to the other one and I actually happen to look at the pattern and I see that they're actually different lengths. The one closest to the to the side. So, you know, it, it it's in the kind of toward the middle of the back and then kind of toward your side. The ones on the side were longer. So I'm like, I hope I have enough boning. So I look and I do, I have enough. So I was able to measure those. So I had to take one of those out. And then I was thinking about it and I was thinking how it sits on your body. You wouldn't want the boning to be like, so here's your back and you don't want the boning to stick out like this, right? You'd rather that it was curved this way because that would be sort of natural. So I was thinking and I was on the in the wrong side of the lining, so I put it so that it would curve like that on the right side of the lining. And I sewed three of them down. And then I realized, wait a minute, when you put lining inside a dress, you put the right side to the inside and the wrong side is facing out. So those things were curved oh the God. wrong way. So I took one out and I pulled it, pulled the plastic, because it's free floating in there. I pulled the plastic almost all the way out, turned it around and stuffed it back in. And then I sewed it back down. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I started thinking, wait a minute. So I, I just <laughs> unsewed the top little edge of, of the next one and shoved it out a little bit and turned it inside the casing that was still sewn onto the dress. <laughs> I did that. And I fixed all the boning and it's perfect. And then I go to, oh, and then I had a static disaster last night. <laughs> this dress is made from polyester, uh, velvet, and then the lining is, of course, just polyester lining. So it's a static bomb, naturally. <laughs> and I have a dress form that is, of course, covered in polyester, you know, and I'm on a carpeted floor. And it's very dry in Arizona. And so... And she has cats. Well, I have cats. So the dress form has naturally just little pieces of thread and cat hair and whatever. And so does the dress. Because, you know, you I, I don't bother trying to keep cat hair off of anything until I'm done with it. Well, I had put the zipper in. Oh, and that was another... <laughs> that was another disaster. I used the zipper foot and it sewed... Because it's an invisible zipper. And it sewed it so close to the zipper teeth that I couldn't zip it shut, so I had to take the thing out again. I have <laughs> taken out so many seams in this thing. I was going to say, how many times have you made this I've dress? i made like this dress <laughs> about five times, and it's all Vogue's fault. But anyway, I since I had the zipper in, and I had, and I had sewn the top of the lining, and it, that did come out perfectly with the piping on the top. It looks great. But then I went to put it on the form to make sure it would zip and everything fit. So I put it... Since the zipper's on, I had to go over the head of the of the form. And the lining was bunched up in there and everything. So I lean, but the back was open like that in the V, right? And I lean my face up kind of toward it so I could reach down and pull the skirt down along the dress form. Because I had pinned, you know, mm -hmm. I had pinned the little neck thing so that it wouldn't fall. So I pull down like that and the static charge of that dress plus the dress form I got shot in the face with debris of <laughs> and static charge right in my face. And I could feel immediately little tiny threads and hairs and everything in my eyes. Oh and my I was goodness. like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm rubbing my eyes like trying to like, I, have, I think I have threads in my eyes. <laughs> so I took it. We have some downy wrinkle reducer and I sprayed that form and I sprayed the dress. I don't know if it, I mean, it helped for a little while, but then I read in the pattern that it wants me, so the lining is connected on the top, and it wants me to, it's just basically a free, free, free hanging dress inside, and it says, sew the waist seams together. So it wants me to, to take that lining and match it to my dress that I meticulously sewed and re-sewed and re-sewed to fix the waist and either blind on the lining side or blind on the dress side, sew another seam along both sides of the waistband. I'm like, I am not doing that. 
Because it it's potentially could ruin the front of the dress. And even if I'm sewing on the dress, it, you know, on the dress side to where I can see what I'm doing, it, it's not going to match because, you know, nothing ever really matches. Like, you know, to have the lining be the exact same length as the bodice and, and you know, and everything. I'm like, no. I, 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 so I have to hand sew it, I think, is my only option. But then the question is exactly how to hand sew it because I don't want anything to go through to the front. So I'm thinking, I thought about it t this morning. I thought, I think what I could do is have the dress inside out and then pull the skirt of the lining up so that what's facing me is just the waistband of the dress and the waistband of the, of the lining and sew it together that way. Because I don't know how else to do it without, I don't know, I, I, I'm like racking my brain. I have an idea, I'll tell you about it later. So that's my, oh, low battery. That's mm -hmm. yeah. my, um, I'm gonna pause this real quick. Oh, it went away. Are we still recording? I think we, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think the thing is still moving. Okay, so yeah. I'll cut that. But um, so that's my story of my crazy uh, Vogue pattern dress that I think experience. <laughs> but I think it's going to be beautiful. I, I'm sad that I didn't really read through and think through all this because I, I read it and I was like, well, that's weird. Because it would have been easy to just make the bodice and line it when I made it and sew it together like every other dress I've ever made. And, and make the the bottom lining and sew it to the skirt. Yeah, yeah. It it would have been so easy. I I don't know why. Why it does it that way? Well, except the lining is not the same size as well, the it's not skirt. As full. Yeah, right. I but I still could have sewn it and eased it and done it. I it, it would have worked. Um, so. I have learned many, 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 many lessons lessons in this dress. And I guess uh, the first important. being. Don't buy, Vogue don't buy Vogue anymore. <laughs> and then also, you know, not they don't... are beautiful. Vogue patterns they're beautiful. are beautiful, but, but they are, they're written so badly. They are something that you have to really Come put your me, thinking Vogue. cap on. Would you, Vogue, I think, I think all the, pa the pattern companies, something weird is happening with them. They like all owned by the same people now or something. I don't know, but, uh, we better go. My iPad just told us that it's, it's, uh, it's wanting to die now. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. thank you for joining us. And um, join us next week. Make sure to like and subscribe and put on your notifications. And so tell others about us. It. And tell us about it. Um, we thank you for our new subscribers. We have another, I think we're up another mm -hmm. three or four mm -hmm. um, this past week. So we're really happy about that. And um, so we hope that uh, you'll join us each week. Bring your stitching and sit and chat with us for a while. Did we have anybody request? No, no nobody okay. requested the the the, uh, the free bee that we gave away some time ago. Yeah, but maybe we can do a, a giveaway of some kind for like I don't know, fifty subscribers. We're about ten subscribers away from that. We oh, could yeah? do something like that. Mm -hmm. So help us get to fifty, and we'll do a giveaway. Um, I just decided that. On the <laughs> for the but um, also... Um, a visit uh, our Etsy shop? Yeah. And tell us in the comments what your nerd badge is for. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.